What's better than one LiDAR drone? How about two LiDAR drones? You know what's better than two? How about three LiDAR drones? Today we're flying three LiDAR drones, the DJI L1 LiDAR, the ROCK R2A, and the Regal Minivox. We're going to be flying all these drones and comparing them to aerial targets set by a surveyor. So stay tuned and see the accuracy of all these systems. Let's fly! Three LiDAR drones! So today we're doing all that accuracy on those three different LiDAR drones. We're testing the accuracy. We're here in Northern California and we have an actual land surveyor with us doing ground control because not only are we doing this video for you, but we're also doing a boundary survey as well as a topographic survey for a customer. This is their beautiful property here. And at the end of the video, we're gonna be doing a complete review of the data compared to those control points set by the surveyor. So we're flying the three LiDAR drones. We're doing the exact same flight path, the same height above ground level, terrain following. So it's gonna be a real apples to apples comparison and we're gonna see exactly how do these three different LiDAR sensors work. Again, it's all about accuracy. So today we have a licensed surveyor, land surveyor here. This is Thomas Terwilliger, professional licensed land surveyor. Thomas, what are you doing here today? Well, I'm excited to be here. I'm a California licensed land surveyor, and my job is to conduct the control portion of our, sur of our aerial survey. We have about 20 ground control points throughout the site that we are going to measure with survey grade GPS and so that we can tie together our ground control with the LIDAR data and minimize errors and have a more accurate uh, uh, digital terrain model. Awesome, Thomas. So we're gonna go ahead and get out there, lay those area control. Thomas is to come, mark them with his GPS equipment. Let's get going. Great. So this right here, this is one of those aerial targets. We're using these to actually tie in with a land surveyor, all the LiDAR data into a measurement here on the ground. So we gotta put several of these around the job site and go measure them. Let's go. All right, this is a good spot. All right, put that firmly on the ground. Land surveyor is gonna come and mark this point. So it's not just about how many ground control targets you have, it's also about where you place them. So right now I'm placing a few more targets here in the opening, but also Matt just walked down here by those tree line right there. He placed a target there. So now we have aerial targets next to heavily vegetated area. We have tar targets in the wide open area, but almost always we're placing these targets on a level surface. So here we have these three different LiDAR sensors. Really, what is the difference? Now, for one thing, price. Price is a big difference. Over here, we have a $180,000 LiDAR sensor. On this side, the DJI L1, don't tell them I told you, it's about 17,000, plus all the accessories, we're looking at about 25,000. And then the R2A is about 30,000, with all the accessories, about 40,000. So we have different prices on these systems, but then also we have a difference in accuracy and usability and how they work and where they work. So the L1 on the DJI M300, only for the M300. The Minivox over here on the M600, well, it's really heavy, so it's not gonna fly on these other two drones. And then the R2A, it can go on any one of these three drones. So that's the different operability of the systems. And then you have accuracy. And really, I'm not gonna do a spoiler because we're about to fly and see what the accuracy is. So why don't we just go ahead and get up in the air and start flying and then see what the accuracy of these different systems are. Let's do it. First up, we got the L1. Let's fly. We got the Regal Mini Bus on the M600. Let's fly. Let's fly. 
So we just finished flying all three of these LiDAR sensors. We had the land surveyor go out and capture those aerial targets. You saw me with those checkerboard patterns. Now what we're going to do is go back and process the three data sets from these systems and we'll compare that data to those aerial targets from the surveyor. That way we're going to have a good baseline to compare the accuracy of the three different systems. And of course, all this data is going to be on the rock cloud. You guys can see it, you can share it, it's great. So let's go back to the office now, take a look at that data. And welcome back to the office. Now before we jump in and compare the accuracy of those three LiDAR data sets, I went ahead and flew a second flight with all three over the Alameda Naval Base. And this is an old retired airstrip, but it's a very flat, long, hard surface that's going to make an ideal situation to compare the accuracy of those three LiDAR sensors. And I did one more in that. Well, I actually did 190 more in that. I captured 190 ground control points there. And honestly, in the findings of this data, there's some very interesting things I've seen in one of the LiDARs in particular with using those 190 ground control points. So make sure you stay tuned for that part of the video. But first, let's go ahead and jump into that hillside data set. I'm gonna pull up all three LiDAR sensors in one visualizer. We're gonna look at cross sections of going through the grass and seeing that relative precision of the fuzz. We'll see how they line up to those ground control points. We'll look at the overall aesthetic of the data sets. And then we'll see the accuracy report as derived by using the rock cloud to generate a surface from those data. So let's just jump into it right now. So here I am over on the rock cloud. I'm gonna pull up this hillside folder and I can see that I have the three LiDAR data sets in here, the L1, R2A, and Minivux. Let's go ahead and bring them up in the same visualizer. The first up is a DJI L1 data set. Let's just take a look at how it aesthetically looks at first. So the first thing you're gonna notice is, man, the colors look beautiful. Very saturated, you know, very deep dark shadows as well as these greens look great. I mean, the trees look colorized perfectly. And you have the hillside looks really good too. A couple of things I'm noticing, it does, it looks a little bit fuzzy, but really good in general. Let's compare that to the R2A. So here we have the R2A colorized view, and you can see it looks a little overexposed, maybe a little uh, unsaturated as compared to the L1. Still good, the alignment looks good. You can see the trees are colored well and the grass is where the grass should be. So it looks like the colorization is lining up pretty spot on. And finally, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So right here we have the mini Vux data and you'll see right away, you can see these gray striping on here. Now, this is actually a problem that the camera field of view is uh, not as wide as the field of view as the laser scanner. So there is points that don't get colorized. And that was a decision I made not to cut that por portion off because what I wanted to do is I wanted to see the overlap of the LiDAR strips in order to see the actual accuracy of these, this different LiDAR system. So I left that in there, but you can see, you know, it's, it looks good, but you do got that big gray banding, which is pretty annoying. Let's go ahead now and look at the ground control points and see how the LiDAR data sets are lined up to those. First up is DJI L1. Let's go ahead and take a look at this ground control point up here. And we're in the RGB view. And we can see it's a little bit off to the side in the RGB view, but this is not the way you should be looking at this. What you should be doing is switching over to the intensity view. And you can see right there how that point just kind of jumped off to the side. Now, this is because the RGB camera and the laser scanner aren't perfectly aligned, so there's a mismatch there. And that's, that's pretty normal, so just a rule of thumb, you should always be looking at an intensity view when you're aligning your LiDAR data to ground control points. Just always do it. So this right here is the control point. You can see it if I zoom out a little bit. I'll, I'll adjust the intensity, try making it pop a little bit better. You can clearly see that's it right there. Two white sides and the black sides. I'm gonna go ahead and change this over to the GPS time view. And I'm going to kind of get a profile view of that data set right here. You can see it looks it looks pretty darn fuzzy right there. It's a lot of stray points below the surface. Let me zoom back out. So in this view, this is the GPS time view. This is kind of how it was flown in time. You can see this orange, the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, and these are all individual passes of that LiDAR scanner. So I can do the same thing and switch over to the R2 at the same spot. So here we have the R2A LiDAR data set at that same control point. And you can see even on this one, the 
the control target is off here to the right a little bit, but if I switch over to that intensity view, you'll see that it then pulls over right in line with that control target. So you can zoom out. That's the target right there, and that's the point right there in the middle of it. And if I switch over to the GPS time, kind of do this looking down the barrel, just kind of getting an idea for the fuzz. Definitely, definitely a lot less fuzz than that L1. But we'll do cross sections here in a second. But first, let me pull up the, the Regal Minivox at that same location. So here's the Regal Minivox, and we can see on this one, right away you see the data set is a lot more sparse, not as many points, and you get this line, line kind of banding effect. Right there to the right, that is in the RGB view, that aerial target. And then I can switch again over to the intensity view. And it certainly is more difficult to see, but you can see if I move this slider, that right here is the aerial target that we are comparing to. And if I switch over to that GPS time and look down the barrel of it, you can see once again, much more precise data. So now we just looked at the overall look and feel and the colorization of these individual data sets. We kind of zoomed into a control point and just saw how it lined up in the intensity view versus the RGB view. And now let's grab a cross section across all three data sets and look at the relative precision, the fuzz of the data sets with respect to each other. So to do that, I'm going to use this quick tools and I'm going to look at the compare view, which brings up all three data sets in a false color. So now we can see the Regal Minivox is in red, the DJI L1 is in blue, and the Rock R2A is in yellow. I'm going to come up here into the measure pane, grab the height profile, and we'll make it basically going right next to that control point. And I'm gonna extend it out over here, a big chunk here. And we'll turn off those control points. I'll make the width 0 0.5 feet. Oh, that's not that many feet. 0 0.5 feet, there we go. What we're gonna be looking at here is that relative fuzz, that precision of the individual LiDAR sensors. And honestly, this is not the best location to do it because it was tall grass. So in that tall grass, you're getting measurements from the top of the grass and going all down to the bottom. So there's some natural fuzz in these data sets. So that's where the airport data set is gonna give us a real good information about what the actual precision of these systems are. But for now, let's go ahead and just take, this is a real world example, so you might as well look at that relative fuzz. And then after that, we'll look at those control reports based on the surface that was generated from the rock cloud. So here we have that profile tool, and right away we can see the blue is dominating the view of the profile, and that is the DJI L1. And then the Regal's in red, and then the R2A's in yellow. So over here is where that control point was that we were just looking at. So if I move this cursor along here, that's basically right over here. Let's go ahead and just zoom in on that location. So that's right where that control point was. So now we can see the blue. It's kind of, uh, you know, this top to bottom right there in the fuzz. We have the yellow right here. And then we have the red in the middle of the yellow. Get some points above and below the red and the yellow. So this is looking at the fuzz of the individual data sets. This is kind of an indication of the precision of what the data was captured in. So let's go ahead and just take some rough measurements. I'm just gonna measure points on the high end compared to the low end, measure that deviation. We'll do it for the L1, then the R2, and then the mini box. I'm gonna pull out my phone here and use the calculator. Let's look right, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, it looks like a bottom surface kind of right there. This looks average. I know we got points way up here. I guess we can do those. We'll do the extremes. So I got this one. This is 1715.911. So let's just say 5.911. Subtract out this one. It's hard to tell. Let's just do this one. That is 1714.101. So let's do 4.101. It's about 1.8 feet right there. Next, let's do the same spot, the R2. That is almost three tenths of a foot right there. 
Now again, this is all on that grass. So let's go ahead and look at the regal as well. So the regal's in red. So we got a point here and the point there. It looks to be a kind of a spread. There's also this point up here, a point down here. So that's rated about almost two tenths of a foot. So what we're measuring right there is the precision, the fuzz, but on this data set, it was all grass. So really, we want to be looking at a hard flat surface to measure this accurately. And that's where that airport data set is going to come in. First, let's go ahead and take a look at what was the surface generated from the rock cloud and what was the accuracy able to be achieved from that surface to ground control points. So I'm going to pull up the GCP reports for all three data sets and we'll take a look at that right now. These ground control point reports are based off of the ground classified LiDAR data set and then a surface made from that data set, so a digital elevation model, and then the contours drawn from that. So that surface is being compared to the, the ground control points, and that's where these accuracies are being determined from. So the first up is the DJIL1 with the accuracy report right here. And if you scroll down, it's reporting a two tenths of a foot vertical RMS accuracy. And that is from that surface that was generated from the rock cloud. You can see all the points here. All this data is available online. Next up, let's look at the rock R2A. Here you have the accuracy report. And you're getting about a tenth of a foot vertical accuracy on that surface and a 0 0.008 foot mean delta in elevation. And third up, but not least, is the Regal Minivox. So we have 0.113, just about a tenth of a foot as well on that vertical accuracy. Okay, now that we've taken a look at those three data sets on that grassy hillside, let's look at the real meat and potatoes, which is this Alameda Naval Base. And the runway is a very flat surface, which makes it just ideal for looking at accuracies. And I found some very interesting findings. Well, let's jump into that data set right now. So if you're following along, we have this folder right here called Airport. Inside of that, I have four data sets, the L1, R2A, the R1A, as well as the Minivux. I'm gonna pop over here to the compare view. And here you can see all those ground control points. There's 190 of these things all over this data set. You can see all the lane markings were captured and then the, the lane, the runway number was captured as well as all of these creases and cracks in the construction of the runway. I'm gonna go and open up the LiDAR view now and take a look at this. So here we have all four of those LiDAR data sets superimposed on top of each other and we're all in intensity view so this is actually showing us, let's just look at one really fast, we'll just look at, turn them all off, we got the R2 here and now this is that intensity view and you can see the lane markings and if we zoom in we can see exactly where those control points were captured. We can even zoom in on a single one and just see, hey, that point is right on the corner and it's right in the middle of that fuzz. This looks good. Okay, so now I have all four of these LiDAR data sets pulled up on top of each other and I've colorized them by which data set they are using the compare. So the DJI L1's in red, the Rock R2A is in blue, the R1A is in yellow, and then the Minivox is in purple. Before we jump into looking at that precision here on this hard flat surface, I want to point out something that I found very interesting. What I'm going to do is I have a large cross section going across basically the entire runway. And it's kind of cutting through a lot of time that elapsed in the acquisition. So I found something very interesting in the L1 data set. So check this out. Now, as you see on the top, I'm going from left to right, and this is basically the direction I flew. So this is over time. If I look right here, we'll see that that L1 data set well, it seems, to be, it seems to be high. I mean, it looks pretty fuzzy and also, but it's higher than the blue and the yellow and the purple that's down here at the bottom. So naturally you'd say, hey, why don't you just lower that data set down and make them all sync up? Well, let's go ahead and look over here. Let me zoom out, come over here. And now, if I look over here, well, the data set's low now, but again, the R2, R1, and the Regal Minivux are all basically right on top of each other. So what I'm seeing happen here is some time-dependent long-term undulations in the accuracy of the data set. So I can do a one measurement of that fuzz at one point, and that's going to tell you what that fuzz is. But because this is a long and a very flat, hard surface, we reveal some very interesting findings that there's actually long-term undulations in the data set as you go over time. So just looking at one point, that would be one instant in time. And we're gonna do that right now. But 
also this finding that it seems that it's undulating and it doesn't seem I've done a bunch of cross sections, it's not doing it consistently. So there is some sort of floating going above the data sets and below. And this also checks out with all the ground controls, all, the, all those points as well. You'll see that if you line the data set to the GCPs, it'll be, you know, high in some of them, low on some of them, but it's not consistent. So that's a very interesting finding. And, you know, that's very interesting. So let's go ahead and just measure some of this fuzz of the four different data sets and just get an idea of that. And disregard the fact that you see one above the other one or below the other one. The R2, R1, and the Minivox, if you look everywhere, they're smack dab on top of each other. And they're also smack dab on top of all the GCP points. And the L1 will just be kind of undulating above and below that surface. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in right here. So we can see the red is going from here to here. So that difference is 0.485 feet. It's about a half a foot of fuzz right there. And then if I look at the R2 in blue, 0 0.092, just under a tenth of a foot. Let's look at the Minivox in purple. The Minivox got about a half a tenth of a foot. And the R1. The R1 also got just under a tenth of a foot. And we could just see empirically by looking across this data set, the L1 has some very fuzzy sections, and then there's some sections that are not so fuzzy, and then a fuzzy again. But that still doesn't explain that undulation from high and low. So that's very interesting, very interesting finding. Now here's my conclusion in short. The R2A and the Minivux, these are good for surveying. You can get that tenth of a foot accuracy on that surface model, and you can measure that fuzz and feel comfortable that the data that you're getting is going to be accurate and repeatable. The L1, although it's very inexpensive and affordable, which is awesome, and the colorization looks gorgeous, there is that fuzz that comes with the data set. And also that fuzz is moving up and down over time. So this makes me feel that if you went and flew two times or three times or four times in the same spot, it wouldn't necessarily repeat itself because over time you're getting some undulations. Now the L1 is very inexpensive. It does capture good data if you want to see just the general overview or if you want to capture some more less dense contours. So maybe a, a two foot contour or a 10 foot contour, no problem all day. But when you're talking about survey grade systems, you really need that repeatability and that accuracy. And today we just didn't see it. I didn't see it on either one of these data sets and let that be what it is. So that is basically my findings from the R2A, the L1 and the Regal Minivox. There's a large difference in price. And when you need accuracy and survey grade, you're going to want to use a Minivox or this R2A. And if you just want to have the overall view, if you're doing something that's not so stringent on that accuracy, the L1 is a great option. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now all these data sets are available on the Rock Cloud. You can click on the link below and view them. You can download them. You can draw your own conclusions as well. And let me know in the comment sections what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video. You know I love making these. So please like, subscribe, and I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones.